<laughs> so, Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> Russ. Hi. Just, just, just uh, as a clapperboard at the beginning, Mike, I'll just, just say something. Um, I'm online to an old friend in England, and we're now going to discuss the general election in the UK. Um, some big impressions about what it's like on the ground. Um, so I'm going to ask my friend now, uh, tell me, uh, my anonymous friend, um, what, what is, uh, in, in the constituency you live in, number one, what, what, what do you think is going to happen there? Have you got a Brexit candidate? Does any other party stand a, a cat in hell's chance? And then wider than that, within your sort of group of contacts and friends, um, what do you think have been the, the the standout issues that people are talking about? Well, firstly, in my constituency, um, the long-standing MP, who has uh, uh, been an MP for, I think, 35 years, stood down about a year ago. And so uh, the Conservative Party have a new candidate. Uh, in my constituency, uh, it has always been a staunch Conservative uh, vote. Uh, and I think that vote will be weakened, but I think the Conservative was, will, still hold, um, will still hold the, uh, the seat. Um, who, who are the other? candidates against him? Is there a Brexit party candidate against the standing person or is it one of the ones that Nigel Farage stood down in? Yeah, all the parties are represented. Including the Brexit party? Yeah. As the Brexit, so, so it's not held by the Tories at the moment in your seat then? Yeah, it is. Well, that means the Brexit party candidate must be running as a independent then? I... I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, looked at that, so uh, you, you may be, yeah, you may be right. Okay, and for the sake of anonymity, you, you don't think you, you can tell us which constituency it is without, without us guessing your identity. Well, it's, it's in Kent. It's in Kent. Okay. So. Yeah, but you know this. You know, the bigger picture is the important thing, and to my mind, what people are focused upon is, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, what are the issues and uh, and what's going on. And I think the general view, of people I know, and you know, as we all appreciate, uh, the people you know uh, and talk to uh, generally have a, a similar uh, mindset. Uh, to what you have was may not be a reflection of uh, the general population, but uh, the uh, uh, my understanding of the general idea uh, of the general opinion is that uh, well, first and foremost, um, uh, the election ca campaign has uh, become a pantomime, uh, like children in a, a school playground. Uh, taunting and accusing each other of uh, of various things and arguing amongst themselves. You got a lot of dramatic yesterday. You have uh, Boris Johnson uh, uh, riding a JCB and uh, uh, and all of those sort of things, uh, which may or may not influence people. But the main issue was the uh, the parties. Uh, you know, uh, particularly uh, uh, Conservative Boris Johnson is focusing upon Brexit, getting Brexit done. The issues that people are, I think, focusing upon is saying, well, what are you going to do about the NHS? You know, the NHS is uh, in crisis uh, and you're trying to convince us that uh, Brexit is the, uh, the most important thing. Uh, I don't think people generally are going to be uh, overly impressed with the uh, 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 the general approach of uh, trying to uh, throw money uh, at uh, voters to try and persuade them to vote for a particular party. I think uh, people are astute enough to say, well, what we want is the basic issues of health, education, 
and law and order to be sorted out. Mm-hmm. Now, now, uh, you know that that that's my view. That's the view of the people I talk to. What I don't know is what the majority of voters think, because uh, people there are a large number of people, but I've been too disingenuous to uh, the voting population because the voting population, you know, do act intuitively and, you know, uh, and whatever they vote for, uh, you know, they vote for, and that's the way it is. Uh, But it has to be said that there are uh, a number of people who are... um, persuaded by dramatics who are persuaded by uh histrionics and uh, and all of those sort of things um uh, as to whether uh as to what the outcome might be uh a few uh, a few weeks ago maybe a month or more ago i said to you that um uh it's likely that we're going to have a hung parliament uh a few weeks back two or more weeks back, it looked as though, uh, you know, the polls were saying that uh, Boris Johnson Conservative would have a pretty much a landslide. Uh, today, uh, well, over the past few days, has been narrowing according to the polls. And uh, now it's very close. And so looking at uh, uh, an hung parliament, uh, what we know is that the, uh, the polls uh, don't always and generally don't get it right. Uh, as to what the outcome would be, I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone being honest could, could say that uh, anyone that put the house on it would be a bit of an idiot, in my view. Yeah. Uh, but whatever, you know, on whatever outcome. Mike, on... on, on <laughs> I'm going to wrap it out. <laughs> um, can we just separate out uh, what I would call the real issues, which you listed as NHS, um, health, education and law and order, those three things, and then Brexit. Um, now, just starting off with Brexit, um, what do you think is, and uh, the general impression of Boris Johnson's slogan, um, let's get Brexit done. And get Brexit done is an anagram of being extorted, by the way. It, it really is. A word, it's a letter for letter anagram of being extorted. Get Brexit done. Does the revised um, Brexit treaty, um, which, which, which Boris Johnson is proposing, does it get Brexit done? Is it is it Brexit? Well, my uh, my uh, view is that uh, what we should have is uh, a clean break from the EU. Uh, the Theresa May, the current uh, proposal, uh, does not give us a clean break. And uh, it is uh, full of compromise. And I fully expect that uh, uh, if the Tories uh, uh, get in and they um, uh, achieve what they call uh, uh, a Brexit, uh, we will still be uh, very heavily linked to the EU. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, let's get it done. Uh, means that let's do let's do it my way, which isn't what many people would call Brexit. Well, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, people uh, uh, generally uh, appreciate what uh, the detail of Boris Johnson's uh, approach would be. I think that, 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 that's. Really, the nature of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, um, but I, I think that uh, people are aware, for instance, that the 
the, the, the trade negotiations, the redacted trade negotiations, and then also the leaked um, uh, Foreign Office report about the Irish backstop spot and the Irish border, whatever. Um, those two things, and then the final thing, which no one knows about because it just isn't spoken about, uh, is the EU military unification bit, uh, w w which Lord James of Blackheath... Um, yeah, um, well, the, the, the point there, Roger, is that um, both you and I and uh, also the community you talk to are fairly well informed about uh, these sort of things. They, I think the vast majority of voters uh, uh, don't know um, and and I think their general feeling, their intuitive feeling is, well, whatever it is, uh, whatever Brexit means, just do it. Get on with it. And let's focus upon other issues. Right. So that's when we come to the set of real questions, which is the three you listed, which is health, education and law and order. Now, um, if the general feeling is Brexit or no Brexit, we want to vote for someone that is going to sort out these three things. Right? How, 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 how do people grade, do you think, the fact that we've had almost 10 years of um, Conservative government, first the coalition, then Theresa May, now Boris Johnson. I think that's why the I think that's why the uh, the margin between Labour and Conservative is uh, narrowing, because people are saying to us, "Well, you know, we've had a Conservative for ten years. Uh, you know, all we've seen is uh, uh, health, education, and uh, law and order get worse." Yeah. Uh, what persuades me to think that if we give them another term, that they would do anything different? Well, quite. I mean, they're promising the end of austerity um, and, and, and trying to paint austerity as necessary because of mismanagement by um, the last um, the, the last new Labour uh, Blairite government, the last Blairite Prime Minister having been, of course, um, Gordon Brown. Now, you know a lot about financial markets. You know, you, you are from that city world. Um, I'm not giving too much away from saying that. Um, tell us, Mike, um, why was there no money left in the Treasury, the famous note which keeps getting dragged up? What were the events that led up to um, the 2010 uh, defeat of New Labour, the defeat of Gordon Brown at the election, um, the global financial crisis. What was it? You know, what, what, what happened? Well, uh, no, you, you, you can explain yeah, 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 yeah. it. Well, firstly, uh, um, there never is money in the Treasury. Uh, there never is, uh, you know, a, a, a pot of cash which is being uh, uh, allocated uh, is, uh, you know, we are in a debt driven economy. Uh, and uh, we have an economy where since 1986 and the Financial Services Act, uh, the banks have, allowed, have been allowed to move into Wild West uh, territory uh, where they're able to uh, use uh, retail deposits to uh, support investment banking, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, investment banking equals casino banking, uh, where what is happening is that uh, all, is, uh, all is going on is that bets are being made and there are winners and there are losers within that financial community. And um, where there is, uh, one of the, in 2008, uh, where things get completely out of control uh, and where the, uh, the amount of debt uh, uh, grows so high uh, uh, and where 
banks then start to go bust, what happens is that the uh, taxpayer, the man on the street, is uh, asked to step in uh, to uh, recapitalise those banks. And, uh, you know, we're seeing a situation where uh, we're getting very close to that uh, uh, right now. There's a lot of... Uh, Sorry, rest- a repeat of, of two Yeah, yeah. And this time round, it's probably going to be bigger than last time. Right. And, and, and particular questions revolve around uh, Deutsche Bank, do they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Deutsche Bank is uh, on the edge of the cliff at the moment. Uh, and the question being asked at the moment is, uh, you know, uh, uh, how will Deutsche Bank be able to keep their uh, top people uh, when they're unable to uh, provide uh, uh, Christmas bonuses? Well, that's one question. I mean, the big question really is for the German Treasury or the EU, ECB Treasury, and um, Deutsche Bank's derivatives position. Um, I mean, I'm not giving too much away to say you know all about banking, accounting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is a derivative, and how big is that problem? Well, you know, uh, derivative is uh, is a word that um, uh, covers a wide spectrum, and it is a financial contract based upon an underlying asset. And the underlying asset uh, can be currency, uh, commodities, uh, uh, you know, a, a range of things. But 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 if you if you strip away all of the uh, the city talk, the financial talk, uh, what it is is esoteric, uh, you know, arguably very strange uh, contracts. Uh, and contracts for uh, uh, for betting uh, yeah. as to uh, how uh, certain things uh, will occur in the future, as to whether a currency will go up or go down, as to whether uh, a commodity, whether it's uh, grain, coffee, bullion, uh, whatever, how that will, will move. Is... Uh, uh, am I right in thinking that the confidence of one bank in another bank to meet its obligations under derivative contract um, affect the willingness of those same banks to lend money uh, overnight to each other to balance the books with the central banks. And so when, when, when that trust breaks down, the whole system starts to unravel. Yes, it does. Yeah, but... Now, yes, it does. Bar um, the attitude of the central banks at the moment is that, uh, and what you talked about is, uh, in the absence of lending between intra uh, bank between banks, they turn to uh, what used to be called the central bank discount window, uh, but more recently it's called the uh, the repo market. Yeah. Uh, where the the the, uh, the banks are, uh, central banks are providing that uh, uh, stopgap, uh, where uh, the commercial banks will not provide overnight funding. Right. Uh, okay. they... So let, let, let's let's just simplify this into a word picture, right? Mr. Deutsche Man Banker is out at the strip club down the ballet, as we used to call it. Um, and what he's done is he's gone in and sort of says, I'll, I'll stand around for everyone. I mean, he's, he's basically offered to buy a drink for everybody. All the other bankers stood around and now thinking, is he going to be able to pay for this round? Or are we going to have to get our credit cards out to pay for him? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, so in that situation, perhaps everybody starts getting a little bit leery about getting their own round in. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm looking for a, a way to... Know, it's, it's, to uh, it, what, it, it, what it comes it, down to is that the, the whole financial and uh, banking system operates on confidence. And it operates on the confidence that the system as set out will continue to work. 
as soon as uh, you get a situation where uh, the participators lose confidence about what they expect to happen, because it's happened before, they lock down and they say, we've got to try and protect ourselves. Yeah. And when you don't have that free flow of, uh, of funding, uh, then uh, the system starts to, uh, starts to fail. And, you know, whilst... Because the, the financial model oh, is... Mike, none of that, Mike, has got anything to do with spending on, let's say, go back to our three main things, spending on health, education, and law and order. And I would like to add defence into that as well, other being an army brat and all the rest of it. Defence defense is an important, is incredibly important. The, the, fact, the fact is that the, uh, the financial markets uh, operate in a world of their own. And uh, they operate uh, 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 with uh, with impunity. So, so can I just ask another question then? So, the national debt has doubled under the current Conservative administration. That's right, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. more or less doubled. Yeah, yeah. And that money almost exclusively has gone into what you called casino banking. Yeah, and yeah. All these yeah. debt between banks, yeah. at which they do very nicely. But um, meanwhile, uh, the real economy, the rest of us that are trying to do real things, make things, sell things, provide a service, etc. Bank lending to small and medium enterprises has stagnated at best and gone down. In yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so the idea that no money being left in 2010, which was a joke note, uh, not dissimilar to this leaked phone call of, of, of the health minister joshing about, you know, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's security risk, whatever. Um, it comes back to what you're saying about the, um, the childishness of driving JCBs through polystyrene walls. You know, that, so, without, that, a doubt, without a doubt, the uh, financial markets are out of control. Uh, yeah, yeah. They can I ask one question, just because, just, uh, as you said, that's very esoteric and, and, and uh, the numbers are huge. And, and yeah. um, we all struggle to get our heads around such large numbers. Um, but the, it comes back to the point... Um, is the claimed competence of a Conservative government over a Labour government justified based upon the experience of having a new Labour government from 1997 to 2010 and the 2010 to 2019 track record, first under Chancellor uh, Osborne, uh, then under Chancellor Hammond, and now under Chancellor, um, uh, what's he called? Um, oh, the ex-Deutsche Bank Chancellor, you know the one, uh, Sajid Javi, Sad, as they call him, yeah. right? He was a Deutsche Bank banker, and we've just been yeah. talking about Deutsche Bank. He is the Chancellor of Exchequer, and, and he is saying that he is more competent, and his three, his two predecessors, were indeed more competent than Gordon Brown. Now, whatever we think of Gordon Brown, I don't like him personally, um, but I, I think it's a stretch to say that those three uh, are, have been, indeed will be more competent than Gordon Brown had been. Would you say that's fair? I don't, uh, uh, I don't take the view that uh, simply because uh, uh, one candidate for a Chancellor of the Exchequer understands the financial system better than another means that there will be any positive change. Right, OK, I accept that point. Um, but in terms of let's have a Margaret Thatcher, um, you know, this fantasy idea that the, uh, the, the, the national economy is the same as a household budget, um, you know, it, 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 it is... Uh, 
uh, John well, McConnell's handbag. Yeah, I, I, I think that's... Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's... Uh, if I may say so, I mean, that's an intellectual a analysis. And what we've got to look at is uh, the majority of voters don't have the sort of understanding that you, I, and others in our community have about the financial system. What they're faced with at the moment, and I think it is straight between the Conservatives and, uh, and Labour, is the choice, uh, you know, who is the... Uh, 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 the least devil among those two groups. Uh, I, you know, if there was uh, uh, of a similar standing, uh, somebody else who uh, spelled out more honestly uh, what is going on, uh, then I don't think anybody would vote for a concept of Labour. Uh, but they face that choice. Is it going to be Labour or is it going to be Conservative? And uh, Regardless of uh, who it is, um, past records tell us um, we don't know what's going to actually happen. Uh, you know, they may give promises now. That's what politicians do. They give promises to get elected. When they get elected, they hardly ever deliver on those promises. Uh, so as to what the outcome will be, who knows? And if uh, we are correct in thinking that uh, uh, a financial correction or a financial correct, uh, correction is imminent, uh, then that will be the perfect excuse not to do anything. Right. Yeah, I accept that. So on this question, um, I, I don't think we can really talk about Brexit, this general election and the, you know, the, these three really important things that you outlined, health, education and um, uh, law and order, and, and, and I, I chuck in defence. Uh, you can't really talk about those things without talking about NATO for defence, but also with the with what's going to happen in 2020 with Donald Trump. Um, and uh, well, the, the, but yeah, but that's that's an intellectual discussion between you and me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, and. Uh, the vast majority. I, 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 I want to insult the intelligence of all. But the vast majority. You know, we have um, an election tomorrow. The vast majority of um, of the population who will be voting tomorrow really don't give a fixed three well, 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 Just in case someone is looking, um, I think it's uh, as well because the BBC aren't going to do it that we. You know, maybe we could discuss it and you could explain uh, why that might be important. What, what, why it's why, why before the Brexit road, President Obama was so keen that, 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 that Britain should vote to remain in the EU, whereas Donald Trump is equally keen uh, that, 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 um, that Britain doesn't remain in the EU. What's all that about? Well, uh, the simple answer to that is that uh, all politicians, all uh, all markets uh, like to have stability. And uh, what they see as stability is to maintain the current system. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, ideas of uh, getting out of Brexit, uh, having change, creates uncertainty. And... Uh, Politicians, the markets don't like that. Right. Look, Mike, we're coming up to about half an hour, so um, I'm just going to close with one, just just one quick question. Um, the election result, Friday morning, are we waking up to a hung parliament or a Boris Johnson uh, government? What's your gut feeling? Well... My best guess at eleven at uh, ten thirty-five uh, today AM UK is that we would end up with a hung parliament. Okay, I, I, I'm with you on that one. That's that that that's what my gut tells me. Wouldn't bet the house on it, but um, yeah. uh, I, I think it will break one way or the other. And uh, I, it's, it's I, mean, I do hope it breaks that way too. To be perfectly honest, yes. I mean. And, uh, and if we do have a hung parliament, would your preference be for it to break that way or to 
I think uh, whatever the outcome might be, uh, be it a Conservative Labour or a hung Parliament, uh, what we will see over next uh, next year is a continuation of the uh, buggers muddle that we've yeah. seen over the last ten years. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it's playing out a much longer a, a much longer timeline, and this is just a, a stopping off point. Yes. But I'll stop recording there, Mike. Thanks for that, and we'll we'll carry on our chat after.